With the threat of AI just around the corner, the question is how do us photographers beat AI? So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about two possible options. The first option is probably the most common one that you hear is if you have a narrative or a story around your pictures, you're gonna be better than AI pictures because AI pictures are like anonymous and they have less meaning without a story. That's probably the answer that you hear the most, but as a lens geek, and someone that loves the kind of the gear side of photography as well as the artistic side of photography, I'm going to approach AI slightly differently. So for myself, I'm gonna try and take pictures different to other people's pictures. And by that, I mean using different equipment. And I know what you're saying, you're like, but Matt, you've just done videos on the modern Sigma 35 F2 lens, the modern Sigma 45 F2 lens, the modern Sigma 65 F2 lens, the Sigma 90mm 2.8, and even the cheap and cheerful plastic Lumix 50mm 1.8. You took nice pictures with those, so what's the catch? Well, I actually cheated. So for all of those lenses mentioned, I was using a mist filter on every single one of those lenses to make the photos look closer to how I wanted them to look. The advantage of using a mist filter is it just takes off the digital edge from the pictures and makes them a bit less mainstream, you could say, and gives more of a vintage glow. You see like, okay, Matt, you just answered the problem for us. We all buy a mist filter and everybody's happy. It's not quite that simple. The problem with mist filters is they make a uniform change across the entire image and they can't change bokeh no matter what you do in post-production. I think you can't change the shape or the character of the bokeh balls in the background like, like this, the blurry background bits. That's where the rare vintage and unusual lenses come to place because those are the lenses that give you this kind of unusual background in the pictures and that's what makes your pictures different from hopefully AI pictures or any of the mentioned modern lenses which will give you very circular perfect bokeh balls. It's nice but it doesn't give you much character. So you're like okay great we all just buy vintage lenses and then everybody's happy. Again it's not quite that simple because one vintage lenses are hard to find in clean condition i.e they don't have mold fungus scratches and equally the very good ones are so rare that they cost a fortune. What we really need is companies to make us brand new vintage lenses. How good would that be? Well, actually, if you know your lenses, some companies have started to do this already. You've got the Leica Noctilux 50mm 1.2 reissue, which I've done a video on. You've got the Voigtlander Heliar 50mm 1.5 classic, which I've done a video on. Those are both based on vintage lenses. And then there's a small company in China called Light Lens Lab. You may have heard the name from the Ted Forbes Art of Photography videos. He's done a couple of videos on these lenses. And it was Ted that finally pushed me over the, over the line to actually buy some. So thanks, Ted. I'll link Ted's videos at the end. So who are Light Lens Lab? They're actually a small optical company in China that was founded in 2018. And they replicate legendary lenses from the past. So a couple of examples is the 35mm f2 8 element lens and the 50mm f2 LCAN, both which have been recognized by the Leica Society because of their kind of precision made to the original specs or as close as possible design, handmade to really high standards. So this is what kind of made my eyes light up. I'm like, wow, this, this sounds like the real deal. The final straw was when they just released the replica of the famous Cook Speed Pancros 2, which is a 1940s cine lens. And once I saw the rending from this, I'm like, I need this lens for my female portraits. So I ordered the Cook SP2 lens, as they call it, and the LCAN, and another lens, which you'll see in a future video. And I've got to work with my testing. These lenses are probably going to be my answer to combat AI for a few more years until AI gets so good that they can replicate past lenses as well as modern lenses. But I think for me, vintage lenses is going to tick my box in terms of keeping me interested in photography against all this modern, very similar looking lenses which are being released at the moment. All slightly different price points, but they'll all give you very perfect pictures. If you want something a bit less perfect, these lenses could be for you. The question you may have is, Matt, there's not much information about these lenses online. How good are they? Should I get one? How do they compare to Voigtlander lenses, Leica lenses? Don't worry. I've posted a part two video straight after this video. So click that and you'll see side-by-side -side testing against Voigtlander 
and vintage Leica lenses, and we'll see how good these lenses really are. See you in part two.